Rock Solid Radio wants to thank Maxwell Construction, who has been our sponsor since the very beginning. For over 30 years, Maxwell has delivered the highest quality projects by holding to their core values of customer satisfaction, positive attitude, respect, and excellence. So if you have any kind of commercial construction need, give Maxwell Construction a call today at 812-537-2200. Welcome to Rock Solid Radio. I'm Linda Hutchinson, the Executive Director of Rock Solid Families, here with my risk-taking, amazing husband, Merle. Hi, honey. Let me guess. What? You refer to me as a risk-taking husband. (laughs) A risk-taking husband (laughs) because you are trying to prompt the show. Well, yes, and if there there was going to be a risk-taker around this table, it's you. (laughs) It's definitely not me. So as we're talking today about fearful parenting, uh, yeah, we're just gonna, I'm just gonna confess right off the bat. And that is, that is something that if I'm not Mm. careful, that's my default. So we're going to be talking about what does that look like? And why do we kind of resort back to this Mm. fear based parenting versus really trusting God that we have been called to be stewards of our children, mm. caretakers of our children, but yet we're not the savior of the world. We're not God. And so we're really going to talk about what does that look like yeah. in today's world? Well, what, hon, what prompted really <clears throat> this, and um, it's to many of you, you may be tired of hearing about it, but you know, if you're in our area and really across the nation, our Cincinnati area, we're in the Cincinnati mm-hmm. area, but and it was because our beloved Cincinnati Bengals played the Buffalo Bills mm. uh, last Monday, a week ago, uh, as you hear this show, and you know, we had a great tragedy on the the field. Mm-hmm. Uh, Demar Hamlin, um, one of the Buffalo Bills players, uh, did what I I mean. I watched the video m- yeah. numerous times now, and uh, pretty much a routine sort of something we'd see mm-hmm. every day in the NFL uh, tackle on T Higgins. And after the tackle, both guys go down. Um, he stands right up and then takes a couple steps backwards mm. and falls and collapses to the ground. And yeah. so that has kind of shook the, the world, especially the, the NFL and sports world. But um, anyway, he went into cardiac arrest, so I should say that. Mm-hmm. He went into cardiac arrest. And I guess I should say, too, that as we're recording this, I mean, there's some miraculous things He's happening. Improving. Because, yeah. you know, we, I, I've actually witnessed uh, a young athlete um, die once on mm. in a track event. Mm. And so uh, through cardiac arrest. Yeah. And so when these things happen, um, pretty much people just go, well, it's, you know, mm. because it, we always even have first aid and stuff at our high school events. But to have it at the level mm. that they have it there at the NFL and to be able to provide the care that DeMar needed in the instant mm-hmm. that he received it was amazing. And as we have come to find out, it was life-saving. Yeah, yeah. And so as we are speaking now, uh, we are hearing that he is speaking with family. Um, his vital signs are strong and mm-hmm. stable. Um, I, I don't know whether he's you know walking around yet or anything, mm. but he's talking to people on Facebook or FaceTime yeah. and stuff. So... Um, amazing. Yeah. But, but as a mom, <laughs> yeah, I couldn't help but think about that as I was watching it unfold Monday night because we were all surrounding. If you're living in this greater Cincinnati, Ohio area, we were surrounding our TVs watching mm-hmm. that game or we had family and friends who were at that game and that you just sit there stunned. Like, yeah. I-, I can't imagine. And I did hear an interview with his uncle who was watching mm-hmm. the game from out of town and saw it all play out on the on the sh- mm. on TV and I can't imagine what that family felt like being so far away and feeling so helpless and so as a mom it, it does it kind of creates this fear and and this this reaction that a lot of parents would be like my son will never play football right I'm right. never going to let them do that. I never want to have that happen to my child. Mm-hmm. And so that's kind of where we're going with this show is parents make decisions every day. Right on you know what their child's going to be allowed to do or what to wear or where to go or who to be with and so we've got to really talk about how does that play into the insecurities and the feelings we have but the decisions we make and so we're really going to tackle that today yeah and uh, mm-hmm. again i mean um whatever you're doing right now it may be perfectly right um 
And so you're just going to maybe feel like you are totally aligned with us or not. If not, we're not here to say this is what you have to do. Right. Every parent does what they need to do within their mm-hmm. comfort and their range and their value system. Um, but these are some things that I think we are going to recommend and suggest based off of um, how we work, the, the knowledge that we have, the wisdom yeah. just from working for years and raising right. five kids. Right. Yeah. Um, and so and part I, of it. I have so many examples in my head. It's just going in a million different directions. But, you know, COVID really brought mm. out a lot of that fear in parents. Like, I'm not going to let my child go to school. I'm not going to let my child do a sport. I'm not going to let my child go out of the house. And so we all have to, like you said, make decisions based on our situation. Right. If you had mm. a um, autoimmune disorder <laughs> or mm-hmm. a child with, you know, some illness that created a, a greater vulnerability, right. your decisions are going to be different than my decisions as a mom. And mm-hmm. so we're going to talk about that too. But before we do, we better thank our sponsors let's before I go sponsors. in a million yeah, let's directions. Let's thank Casey's Outdoor Solutions and Maxwell Construction for being sponsors of the Rock Solid mm-hmm. Radio programming and mm-hmm. also just for their support in the ministry that we do at Rock Solid Families. Uh, Both of these companies are great uh, community supporters, Mm -hmm. and uh, they want to see strong, healthy families to make a strong, healthy community. So uh, if you have any need for a landscaping or if you're in the construction Mm -hmm. world, contact one of these companies because uh, they are doing great things for us. Speaking of healthy... I want to put a plug in for our Healthy Mom series. If you live in the greater Cincinnati area, we are doing a five-session um, series. It's every other Thursday morning. Mm-hmm. We just had our first one last week, and we will continue on January 19th. It's at Bright Christian Church in Lawrenceburg, Indiana. But we are meeting as moms. Um, there's free child care, and mm-hmm. we're really talking about the seasons of parenting and what God is calling us to do in each season on um, responding to situations with our kids playing sports or wanting to go out on a date or drive a car or whatever. And so there's different decisions in different seasons that are really important. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I would love it if you are um, local to come join us on Thursday mornings. If you're not able to join us on Thursday mornings, I would really encourage you to go on to Facebook and to join our Healthy Moms Facebook group. It's just a private group. Mm -hmm. Um, You can be anywhere in the world and then join in and we'll kind of be sharing some of the information we're sharing, but also to connect with other moms who aren't perfect, but they're trying to get healthy spiritually, emotionally, physically, relationally. Can dads join your group? No, oh, sorry. Wow. But you have strong dads. So that's Give a little gonna plug. Lead me into my there plug. There you go. So, guys, uh, we have talked many times <clears throat> about the value of moms and dads, mm-hmm. um, but my emphasis obviously is more on the line of dads. And I will tell you, and the research will tell you, that dads are the most underrated mm. um, entity in the family because. We have seen what happens when you act like you can neglect the purpose of dad in the family. And what happens is we lose the strength in the family. We lose the direction in the family. We lose calm in the family. Um, But we need healthy. We need strong dads. Mm -hmm. We don't need toxic dads. We don't need dads who are not doing well. And so um, I do a Strong Dads um, podcast, Mm -hmm. one, and that's uh, with my partner, um, Kyle, Kyle Crawford. So we release that show um, every Friday, but uh, we also do the Strong Dads Workout, Mm -hmm. and the Strong Dads Workout is every Saturday morning, and so I know that there are a lot of ladies listening to this show here (laughs) right now, Um, but get your husband to come out to our office, which is 7484 Christina Drive out in West Harrison, Indiana. It's right there in St. Leon, actually. and have them come out and join mm-hmm. us for a Saturday morning strong dads. I don't care what fitness level they are. We we, we have, <laughs> you have fun. It all. <laughs> we have fun, and we we make total adjustments mm-hmm. and adaptations. But we do a little workout for about forty five minutes. But then we talk very real, kind of like you do with the ladies with your mm-hmm. healthy moms. We talk very real about uh, mm-hmm. being a dad, being a husband in today's world, and how to encourage each other but challenge each other like sometimes we call each other out like man i don't do a very good job with that you know and and maybe this is how i can do better so Mm -hmm. um both healthy moms and strong dads 
or how we get a little bit more intimate into helping that specific group. So come join yeah, us. Actually, and you're going to do the workout with your new kettle with bar. With our kettle bar. Yeah, our kettle he's bar got his kettle bar shirt on mm-hmm. today if you're listening and not watching. But um, that's one piece of equipment that you have there. But you mm-hmm. have a, a whole array of different things that you use. But um, I'm excited um, to really connect men and women yep. with other people who are <clears throat> not perfect, again, but really working to get healthy. And yeah. that's really what's important. And this is the point of the show is that, like I said, as I started the show off with a confession, like early on in the parenting world, I and we had boys, we had <laughs> young boys who I were was afraid if you were out wrestling with them in the yard or in the family room, oh my gosh, they're going to get hurt. They're going to get hurt. No blood, no foul, honey. <laughs> they're fine. And I had to learn, like, that's how these boys wanted to connect with their dad. Mm-hmm. And for me to jump in and rescue them like you're hurting them mm-hmm. and condemn you. I probably got hurt more than they. <laughs> you never jumped to my defense. But my point is that that really was important for you and for them and for me to jump in and be fearful of what that was going to happen what how was going to happen really mm-hmm. would have you know really restricted that growth in all of you guys so. yeah let's talk a little bit let's give it just a little bit of background and then let's feed it into some uh, recommendations or some thought processing mm-hmm. that parents can use when it comes to actually helping their kids, okay, okay. Uh, grow to be stronger and making the choices on events and mm-hmm. activities to be involved in. So yeah, this was an article that was in Good Housekeeping, and I've actually seen multiples of these types of articles. But these are the mm-hmm. top <clears throat> sports that you should <laughs> avoid putting your kids Uh-oh. in. Okay, these were these sports were listed. I'm not recommending this. I'm reading this. Okay. Mm. These are the sports that were recommended as the most dangerous uh, for um, injury risk. Okay. For, Ameri- for to avoid. To avoid. Kids. To yeah. avoid. So, American football. All right. Um, ice hockey, mixed martial <laughs> arts, MMA, boxing, wrestling. We've struck out a lot, haven't we? We're, we're, we're <laughs> so not far, good we're parents. batting a thousand. Yeah, rugby, lacrosse, and soccer. All you mm. soccer moms out there, we always thought, oh, soccer's a whole lot better than football. <laughs> well, there's a lot of injury that comes from soccer. Mm. Um, and so th- these are the sports that are deemed uh, through this article, and, and we see this a lot, you know, uh, with people of concern. And I'm not saying we shouldn't have concern, and I'm not saying we shouldn't move to safety in these areas, but these are the sports that have kind of been um, red flag, like these are dangerous, okay? How about recommend or read what they recommend? We do have some on the recommended list. Swimming, our, our son is a diver. Although Which I don't... diving is about <laughs> as dangerous as it gets. I'm not really sure if that would be on that list, yeah. but um, track and field, volleyball, we have a volleyball player, um, basketball, baseball, badminton, tennis, and golf. So there you go. If you want to wrap your child in bubble wrap and keep them from getting hurt, these are the sports. I've been too. hit with a golf club before. <laughs> yes, you have. <laughs> <laughs> and a golf ball. Like, yeah. 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 So definitely not always. And, and so we, we just point that out because obviously, <laughs> you know, early on you're looking at, okay, my kids are coming up. Like, what's a good avenue, a good way for them to uh, be active in something, especially if we're talking sports and that kind of thing. But how could I channel them, mm-hmm. right? Um and the biggest injury concern that comes that that brings these onto the list are concussion type injuries, yeah. head injuries. Okay, and so that's legitimate. Right, mm-hmm. we know now that a lot of um, our injuries that are concussion based injuries don't always have great outcomes. Yeah. And and so we're not trying to minimize that. And as a parent, you can steer your children into some of these activities that are safer. But if you have a child that's coming to you saying. I've always dreamt about being a football player. I mm-hmm. want to play football. That's all I want to do. And you're like, nope, 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 nope. Mm-hmm. I I have a um, I knew a child, a student of mine, whose um, goal, his dream, was to be in the military, mm-hmm. and he wanted to end finish school and go into the military. And his mom said, absolutely not. Over my dead body, will you mm-hmm. do that? And man, the resentment that mm-hmm. that student had in his heart for his mom and her fear of mm-hmm. what would happen to my baby, um, man, it, it was long lasting. And I don't know if she realized it, that that really created a wedge between the two of them because mm-hmm. for him, this was something he felt passionate about and felt like called to, and she refused to let him go. Yeah, yeah. And he followed in that. 
Well, here's kind of the rub, hon. I mean, here's here's where there's friction because so we we hear one <clears throat> article say that this is dangerous. You shouldn't do this. Mm-hmm. We should protect our kids. And so you get that whole slant. But then here's the other news. And I would say that this is more in the last couple of years. This is old news to a lot of us, okay? But now it's coming back full circle that uh, we are now seeing um, Mm -hmm. that we have over... over, um, We've coddled. Coddled. We've codified Mm -hmm. this younger generation. We've overprotected. We've Mm overprovided. And that is producing adults that are really in trouble. (sighs) They're, They're not in a good place. Yeah. Um, Tim Ferriss, who does a podcast, The Tim Ferriss Show, he had um, on his show, and it was episode 644, if you'd like to, to look up The Tim Ferriss Show, episode 644, mm. and he had uh, the guest, Jonathan Hyatt, who is the author of The Coddling of the American Mind. Mm. And, it, and basically now, is uh, there's enough research out there now to say, okay, well, here's what's happened to the Generation Z, okay, mm. the Generation Z kiddos. Um, and talks about, you know, these are the kids who have the mm-hmm. highest uh, rate of anxiety. And, honey, you mentioned COVID mm-hmm. uh, being coupled Didn't into that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, they have difficult times making their own decisions. They have difficult time um, taking the risk. Uh, they're afraid of failure. Um, they don't know how to handle failure. Mm-hmm. They don't want to get and, a license. They don't want to yeah. get a job. They don't want to move out. They don't want to go to school. Yeah. And, and, and so, you know, so now we've got the other side, right? Mm-hmm. And so, so um, Jonathan's work actually says, here's actually what we need to be looking at. Kids need to be challenged. Mm-hmm. They, they need to be challenged. Um, kids need to learn how to take risk, hmm. okay? Uh, running out in the street in front of a busy car <laughs> or driving car is not what we're talking about. Right. It's like learning to assess risk mm-hmm. and do the, the whole cost benefit. We've done entire shows mm-hmm. on like, well, what's the benefit of that, okay? Yeah. Can I say something? And I'm talking to these moms especially. <clears throat> and I said this just the other day at Healthy Moms. And I had one mom go, ooh, because she felt so convicted <laughs> by this, okay? One of the things that has been told to moms and dads is that to show your child you love them and that they're a priority and that they're safe and secure is to have them sleep with you. (laughs) The family bed. Mm. I'm just telling Mm. you, this is Mm. a thing. And I know there's people listening Mm. out there that they're guilty of this. And one mom went, but we've, they love it. Of course they love it. But what we've created is this child. And, and, and again, we want the child to feel safe and secure, but not at the expense of one, their own self-sufficiency, feeling right. like I can sleep in my room in a different place than my mom and dad, and I'm going to be okay. If right. they feel like they can't sleep, but here's the deal, mom and dad have insecurities that they're having Mm -hmm. met. It's almost like it's mom and dad's security blanket, but it causes this division in their marriage. Well, I'd have to say, (sighs) and just to be honest, like most of the time when you and I are dealing with this, most of the time it's mom's insecurity. Yep. Yep. And dad's the one who goes to the couch. Exactly. And dad gets resentful Mm -hmm. and mom gets bitter because it's like, you don't love your kids. I guess you don't love your kids because Mm -hmm. I'm sleeping with the kids. You're sleeping on the couch. And so it really doesn't end well. And it really is creating this coddled generation mm-hmm. that feels so insecure and unsafe right. of doing it on their own. Yeah. I think this is kind of funny. Um, you know, in the last 10 years, we've talked, we went back from raising farm animals that were grain fed <laughs> in, a, in a pen, like where we would just put them yeah. in a pen and just feed them the amount of corn or whatever they need each day. And now we're like, oh, that's bad. That's bad. Mm-hmm. That's bad because the cow or pig or whatever has not developed um, good nutrition within their meat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and so now we say they should be free range, free range oh, chickens, yeah, free range. Right. Okay. I forgot about that. And isn't it funny hmm. how now there's a movement to raise free range kids Mm. and what a free range kid is and so this is actually talked about during the tim fair show the idea that we don't coddle our kids so much so i you and i would have been free range kids meaning pretty much uh on a summer morning after chores were done Mm -hmm. mom said get your butt out of the house Mm -hmm. 
and go play. Mm -hmm. And so mom probably didn't even know where we were (laughs) most of the day. She knew a vicinity, Mm -hmm. okay? But we were out riding bikes, playing, Mm -hmm. might have gone up to the local store, which was maybe about a half mile away. Um, and you know, we weren't in trouble. We, we didn't, we weren't causing trouble. We weren't, we weren't at risk. Um, nobody was worried about whether you're going to get attacked or anything like that. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, we, we've talked about this on the show before at dinner time, we had a dinner bell Yeah. and mom would ring the dinner bell and we would, okay, yeah. come running. I, I can hear moms right now. They're listening to you going, but we live in a different world. And, and, and I, mm-hmm. I hear you, Mom. I hear you. There is a higher case of mm-hmm. a lot of abductions and, you know, creepers out there. And I'm, I, I understand. I hear what you're saying. And I'm not saying you just, like, yeah. throw them out yep. into the street and let them figure it out. But we are saying there's got to be a happy medium here mm-hmm. where we don't tie them to the back porch to make mm-hmm. sure that they don't get away. And so we are going to have to let go a little bit and realize that a lot of the reasons we're making decisions is out of our own fear and insecurity. Yeah. Right. Right. Uh, you know, the idea here um, is um, either we're going to become the child's playmate <laughs> so yes. that we keep them active. The entertainment. So we're going to go take them out on every day. We're going to make mm-hmm. sure they get an hour outside and we're going to be the ones entertaining them when we're mm-hmm. outside. And we're going to mm-hmm. think that we're great mommies and daddies when we do that. Or we're going to arrange play dates every day of somebody coming over and yeah. taking care of it yeah. so that they're happy, right? Or if that's not how we are wired, we are going to go, well, I'm busy in the house. Here, here's your phone. Here's your phone. Yes. Mm-hmm. Here's, here's your computer. Tablet. Here's your here's TV. your your game station. And so, a- again, like as you said, hun, l- the idea here is finding that happy medium, mm-hmm. recognizing the culture you do live in. Whether you're out in the country and it might be a little safer to go mm-hmm. roam a little farther, or if you're in a, a city environment, okay, you got to know. You got to know your place. You got to know mm-hmm. what's going on there. So we're. I think the disclaimer here is we've got to use our common sense based off of our circumstance. But we also, if you go back to the to the original thing that was mentioned before, kids need to be challenged. Mm-hmm. They need to learn risk. They, they need to mm-hmm. know what it is to make decisions on their own. Right? Yeah, yeah hon, it makes me think of Jesus walking on the water to the disciples in the boat mm-hmm. and calling them out of the boat right and peter was the only one that was willing to step outside the boat and walk on the water and he walked on the water and he started to sink when when he took his eyes off christ when he took his off eyes off christ Mm -hmm. and he started to see the storm and he started to get fear and then he started to sink and so you know that's what we're going to have to do is help our kids be challenged enough, being willing to enough to take the risk to mm. step out of the boat because that's when they're going to experience great things. Hun, I can't go any further without mentioning the conversation we just had today with our youngest son mm. about diving. Tell him a little bit about the conversation we had with him about where he's at and diving and where mm-hmm. he wants to go and what's going to have to happen. So uh, we have a young diver uh, who is, um, without our saying, uh, we recognize it, but we let other people, his coaches, tell him he's extremely talented. Potentially um, good, yeah. Potentially. He's just got that innate skill. He understands his body and space, and I can't do that at all. He knows how um, to spin more than yeah, we would ever spin, be able to spin. He can spin. flip. He can twist, and he's pretty fearless. However... Um, as he is now being pushed hmm. to do more and better uh, mm-hmm. in these dives, he doesn't always do well, and he smacks, <laughs> and he yeah. he and does he gets frustrated. He gets frustrated, and so the idea mm-hmm. here is um, now he wanted to choose dives that he could feel really good about and get great high scores, mm-hmm. but they're actually most of them were way easier. Yeah. And so now our conversation with him is it's time to take risk. Hmm. And he looked at us when we were like, he's like, (laughs) oh, that could hurt. It's like, exactly. You know, and and so I told him, I said, the kid who can barely do a belly flop on the board should be hurting no more than you because you should be pressing yourself Mm -hmm. enough that you belly flop or back smack or you you do it as much as he does because that's a sign that you're both working. Mm -hmm. And. Um, and again, I'm not advocating that you, you have to hurt yourself. What <laughs> right. I'm saying is, is 
you listen, you are blessed with your talent ability that was given to you. It is up to you then to push it farther or mm-hmm. improve it or tweak it and refine it. And so that's kind of where he's at. Yeah. Even though on paper he looks like he's really good, mm-hmm. um, he's only going to be his best uh, through a lot of hard work and a yeah. lot of smacks. And the hard work is something that we want our children, all of our children and grandchildren to have as a life skill, right? Yep. I don't want them to always take the easy way out. I don't want them to give up when things get hard. And that's what we've had those discussions about. Not in anger, like, you got to do this. But we're saying, you say you want to be a diver. You say you want to be good. This is what it takes, mm-hmm. right? And you can't just get frustrated and take your ball and go home the first time. And, and hun, I had a laugh and share that story with him. But when our youngest three were adopted, they were they came through our family through adoption. And they I remember the first month they were with us and we'd be out playing Foursquare outside mm-hmm. in the driveway. The boy could not handle defeat. Hmm. The minute he lost, he threw that ball. He <laughs> threw it down the street. He would throw it in the woods. We he- have so many basketballs down <laughs> about a, uh, 200 yards away from our house down in a creek. Yeah. He got so mad. He would punch you. He would throw things at you. He'd slam doors because he didn't know how to handle frustration and defeat. He mm-hmm. has come seven years such a long way and i we were laughing about it today he would have never been able to mm. laugh about it seven years ago oh, no i mean he'd go he'd go he'd toe kick to toe you. with you and fight you yeah. but but that's where we've seen such a, an improvement and we want to see him even grow further and be that problem solver be that hard worker right mm-hmm. so what do you want out of your child as an adult because that's what you're going to have to work toward mm-hmm. in how you parent today. Yeah, so I, I do think it's important to, to mention these, hon, because mm-hmm. uh, we have we actually we have 12 different points we're going to touch quickly, so we're not going to kill you with deep depth on all 12, but there are things to consider. But this very first one, I think, is the critical step to getting you started uh, in terms of how you're going to make the decisions about what sports, activities, mm-hmm. things your kids are going to do. The question is, and we've asked this in so many shows, but the question is, what kind of adult do you want to Mm -hmm. raise? What do you want them to be like? And so I wrote down just when I was putting some of this together, I wrote down, and I didn't even ask you, so Mm -hmm. you can add or take away, but I know that from from working together as a parent here. 30, yeah. Yeah, like we want our kids to be problem solvers, mm-hmm. all right? Like they, they'll constantly, how do I do this? How do I, I don't know, figure it out. Mm-hmm. You figure it out. Mm-hmm. Problem solve, problem mm-hmm. solve. Stop solving your kids' problems. Let them use their brain. God gave it to them for a reason. Being self-sufficient, all right? So this is that idea like, that. why do they have to go to your bed to soothe? Mm-hmm. They should be able to be in their own bed mm-hmm. and self-soothe, okay? Mm-hmm. And then, you know, everything from raising their own money, taking care care of their own laundry, mm-hmm. self-sufficiency. We want them to be mm-hmm. that. We want, um, we believe in hard work, work ethic, mm-hmm. right? And that we also believe in rest and play and all those things. But when there's a job to be done, we believe, mm-hmm. you know, all hands on deck and let's get it done. Uh, we yeah. believe absolutely in honesty, yeah. all right? Because uh, we know the, the, yeah. um, the long-term effect of when we're not honest. Yeah. Honest, integrity, trustworthiness, those are things mm-hmm. that we've instilled in our kids from day one. Yeah. And we don't accept otherwise because we know that that's what it takes to be a successful, you know, well-adjusted adult. So, and, and also God. We want God to be, mm. and again, we can't shove it down their throats, but while they're under our roof, these are the things we're going to pray, we're going to worship, we're going to, yep. you know, believe in his word. And, and if as an adult, you reject that and decide not to, I can't make you... But while you're under our roof, this is the kind of stuff that we're really going to focus on. Yeah. So, hey, mom and dad, you're out there listening. You create your list. Yeah. You can use ours if you want. I mean, it's not really ours, (laughs) but create your list and let that be your starting point. Okay. This is what we want our kids to be like when they become adults. These are some of the traits that we want them to have. Yeah. The second thing then is... um, recognizing what the end goal is with a particular activity or Mm. event that your kid is looking to do. If the end goal is more about you, Hmm. all right, like, well, I was a football player, so I want my kid to be a football player, right? Or the end goal is um, just to have fun and it's more of just a social event. But you have to call out like, well, what's the end goal? So Mm -hmm. like when our kids take... um, take part in a sport we you you know as parents like we're already busy enough 
we don't need to have them out like just goofing around. Like we do not, if we hear that our kids are participating in the sport and they're not giving their best effort and they're uh, maybe cheating practices or these kind of things, like that's upsetting to us Mm -hmm. because our end goal is we want this to challenge you. We want this sport to be something that you enjoy but you're in it for all the right reasons. I want to go back to that mom I mentioned who told their son they absolutely cannot join the military, okay? When our two oldest sons came to us and said, we're going to uh, we're gonna make a career, not a career, but we're going to be um, join the military. You know, that didn't, like, make me leap for joy. Like, oh, I can't wait till my son's deployed and across the country and mm-hmm. I don't know what he's doing. But I knew that the end goal was for my son to make decisions that are right for him Mm -hmm. and that he's doing what he feels called to do. So I had to kind of express my concerns, but also allow him to make decisions as an adult. And I don't want to be, have a thumb over him and feel like he can't do what he's feeling called to do. And so I had to really be careful with that end goal and what the what the um, expression would be if I said, no, Mm -hmm. you absolutely cannot. What that would do to our relationship, but also to him. Yeah, yeah. Um, I just think I can't speak for girls because I don't know um, from a girl perspective. We have a daughter, obviously, but I know because of being a man that if it were laid on my heart to be to take on a challenge, and this is everything from a sport Mm -hmm. to starting a business, like at the end of the day, I know one of the things that men struggle with is when they didn't do something that they thought they were meant to do. Yeah. And that's how great regrets come. And I know mm-hmm. that would be the case for women as well. I'm not, I just don't want to speak mm-hmm. from their perspective, but I know for a man, because we are doers, we're, we're, we're visual, mm-hmm. we have to see it come together. And then I just like businesses and stuff that we've started, um, and I've appreciated because they've a lot of times they've made you uncomfortable. But I've mm-hmm. also said, like, I I would be a bear to live with if I didn't say if I didn't give it a try. Yeah. If all of a sudden I'm 65, 70 years old and it's like, well, I had all these dreams, but I never mm-hmm. did them. Well, at least, you know, you have come to see that, you know what, um, I'm not basically irresponsible. I mean, that <laughs> doesn't mean I haven't screwed up at times. But the idea here is, man, I've, I've got to at least try. I mean, mm-hmm. this dream or vision came. I've got to try. If I don't try, yeah. then I'm, I'm half a person. Yeah. The risk versus reward. And as a parent with a child that's a minor living in your home, yes, you have to balance those risks and rewards. You know, we're friends with the Gepper family, and Nick Gepper is an Olympic athlete and world championships and X Games and stuff like that. But mm. he, he, what he does is dangerous. A little and bit. So, a little bit. And so I know his mom's name is Linda, too. I, I can't imagine the feelings that Linda had of, oh, my gosh. But this is how that boy is wired. And so the mm-hmm. risk versus reward. If she had looked at him in first grade and said, absolutely not. You're not getting on that ski slope. I'm going to wrap you in bubble wrap and keep you at home. She would have really had resentment from her son, and she would have had a lot of regrets probably from herself. And so Mm. we've got to constantly be looking at the risk versus reward and really really how you're communicating that with your kids. Yeah. So some, I think, just real concrete things is you actually do, as a parent, you want to assess the actual risk mm-hmm. that are associated with that sport. So I, I don't, I, we're not saying just do anything and everything. I mean, you know, there are ways mm-hmm. to minimize risk, okay? And so I think that that's important. Mm-hmm. Simple things like, listen, if you're going to do this kind of sport, mm-hmm. then let's train you up well or get right. you with the right coaches or have you in the right equipment. Um, you know, I think about guns. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, uh, we've had our sons um, exposed to guns. I shoot guns. Um, I'm not over the top using guns, but when we decided, mm-hmm. okay, we're going to do this with our kids, they all went through the hunter safety program. Yeah, okay? yeah. they're going to be and, hunters. And yeah. so, you know, that's a risky, could be a risky mm-hmm. endeavor, but it's like, okay, well, let's let's try to uh, minimize the risk. Yeah. Other, on the other hand, the other extreme, my mom was very fearful about guns. She never would let us touch a gun. She never let my dad had a gun. They never could go hunting. Like It was like, no, 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 no. And so I don't know if that's the healthiest way either. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, we we had sons who had concussions through football and wrestling. Mm-hmm. And so, yes, we were willing to say, no, you're not going to go back now the doctors are the ones that say you can't go Mm -hmm. back but before it was we said no you're not going to practice until 
the headaches are gone. You're not going to go to that game. You're going to not even put a helmet on. And so there are things where we've said, no, that's enough. But you've got to really weigh that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I, I think um, sometimes if sometimes there's other ways to get what your kid might be wanting to do or what you might be wanting for your kid. And so that might be um, the idea, like maybe you want them active. Maybe you want Mm -hmm. them busy. You want them in a sport. Well, if the end goal is I just want them active, well, then choose a sport that allows that. It Mm -hmm. doesn't necessarily have to be the football or the wrestling. So in other words, you look at your end goal and then you look at, well, are there other ways to go about getting this? Mm-hmm. And so it doesn't mean that we always say, well, everyone in the neighborhood's playing football and mm-hmm. football would keep my kid busy. Listen, if your kid's not absolutely hungry for, for football, right. then I don't know that I would even go down that road. I remember when our youngest son, who you know really had a feeling for gymnastics, he wanted to do gymnastics. Well, mm. it you know gymnastics at a, like a Olympic level is like six days a week, hours mm-hmm. and hours and hours and so I don't think that was his love but he loved to flip mm-hmm. so it's kind of funny how he has to- has kind of been drawn to diving mm-hmm. and skiing which he flips in skiing <laughs> and in pole vault which he flips over the thing it's like he's doing these flips in ways now that kind of is naturally he's gifted at but yeah. it's different than gymnastics right yeah so yeah it's kind of interesting yeah uh, I mean the next thing here is the idea of are they enjoying it yes that's critical are they enjoying it are they benefiting from it i mean um we've had just like you guys out there listening we've had kids sign up for sports all excited (laughs) and all of a sudden halfway through the season it is like every practice is pulling Mm -hmm. teeth and you know at, at that point you know it's especially if there's a high risk of injury and they're not into it, there's probably even a greater risk of injury Mm -hmm. if they're not going to have their head in the right place in terms of motivation. So your kids got to enjoy this. Mm -hmm. Um, Like the, the idea here, you refer to Nick Gepper Mm -hmm. and we know that Nick's had multiple broken bones and those Mm -hmm. kind of things is all I'll say to that is he must in love. He must love it so much Mm -hmm. that he's willing to do that. And, Mm -hmm. you know, good for him. You know, if, if every time he, uh, was going down the slopes and he was worried and fearful about breaking mm-hmm. an arm, I don't think he'd be out there any longer. Yeah. Well, and he's, he's really kind of shifted towards some skating, some inline different skating. Different things, yeah, you know? yeah. And so again, again, seasons of life are different things. And so periodically, you're going to have to reevaluate and reassess. Is this still working for me? Listen to your kids. And then as, especially if they're adults, let them explore and discover that even more so. And so if you don't do that as a child, they're not going to want to do that as an adult. It's Mm -hmm. almost like you've created this bubble wrap child who's afraid of taking risks, afraid of giving things a try. And honestly, hon, that's how I was raised. Mm -hmm. My parents, I love my mom and dad and, um, but they're not risk takers. Yeah. And so it's very hard for them to see that, that that would have been beneficial and hard. And especially my mom, she had a lot of fears on that. And so Part of that is saying, I'm, I want to give this a chance and I want to give it a try and, and, and really give them a chance to do that. Well, and th- th- that's kind of interesting. We have always thought huh, with your mom because she was an emergency room she nurse. Was. And so because she always saw the worst things that could happen. Yeah. From these. Yeah. And, and I so, think that's what created a little yeah, bit of the fear yeah, and paranoia. That was her part. image. And again, if you mm-hmm. get inundated with the worst, you mm-hmm. go, why would anybody do this? Mm-hmm. And it's harder for her to see all the successes that could come on the other yeah. side. So yeah. again, that's all taking a look at all of your environment. Uh, and I do want to touch on one thing. When you're thinking about the programming and our activities or sports that your kids are going to be involved, we have come to realize that probably the most important thing that you can actually look at outside of whether the sport is something they're wired for or they like is actually the quality of the coaches and mm-hmm. the program itself. We have run into coaches that are all about them. We've Mm -hmm. run into coaches that are all about their record. Mm -hmm. Um, As soon as you have, if you see a coach bragging about his record or talking about his record or displaying his record, I would shy away from that coach, Mm -hmm. right? 
that is about them. Mm -hmm. Okay. It doesn't mean that they're not proud about their record or whatever, but especially at your younger ages, like before Mm -hmm. high school, if, if that is how you're seeing this person wired, they're probably not overly concerned with the safety or welfare, Mm -hmm. well being of your child. Okay. And so pick coaches who have a similar understanding of your end goal Mm -hmm. of what you're seeking. Oh, we just want this to be Mm -hmm. a great exposure and learning opportunity. Mm -hmm. Choose that kind of coach. If it's like, no, we're going to win no matter what, then you better be, you better understand that. Yeah. What was the uh, league called that our kids did the basketball? Upward. Upward. Mm -hmm. You know, Upward's a perfect example of that where it is activity, Mm -hmm. but it is Christ-based. It's not about the record or the coach's success. It is about developing the whole child. Mm -hmm. And so our youngest three did basketball through Upward, and it was an amazing experience where they got to meet new people. It wasn't cutthroat. Um, They got a snack at the end. They were all about the snack, you know, (laughs) but it's just a whole different environment and atmosphere. And so we would ask and encourage you to find something, whether it be a a child's youth group, whether it be a youth sport area, Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, um, American Heritage Girls, something that gives them activity, but it's surrounding them with healthy, positive people and students. Yeah, when I was in high school, if you were good and motivated, you played high school basketball. Hmm. If you were me, not very good <laughs> and not very motivated, but you still didn't mind hanging out and playing yeah. basketball, activity. You play, we played CYO basketball, mm-hmm. okay, the Catholic Youth Organization. Mm-hmm. And so, because, you know, but the end goal was different. Yeah. And so finding the right program to match you when I was in mm-hmm. high school on Sundays, me and a group of guys would go down and we would have a yeah. blast. I still did not even get to start though on that team. That's how bad <laughs> I was. I didn't even get to start on the CYO team. Oh, you poor thing. But did you yeah. have fun? We we had a blast. There you go. So, you know, Proverbs 3, 5 and 6 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not on your own understanding, and in all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. We can't be guaranteed that what we're doing and how we're parenting is going to turn out perfect children that's not our goal. Our goal is to help, to, like you said, success, hard work, integrity, things that we're trying to instill in our children. But at the end of the day, God's given them this free will, and we have to trust trust God that he will do good things with what we've been willing to do. So, you know, I don't know if this helps. It's it creates better. About- <laughs> <laughs> so I, I do have a challenge mm-hmm. for you. I mean, I have a challenge for all you guys that are listening, and that is just simply, I want you to think about the things that you've done in your life that Mm. you feel best about Mm. or you have a sense of pride about, okay, Mm. that you feel like it was a great accomplishment for you. I want you to think about those. And then I want you to think about how much risk did those things take from you? Mm. And I I can't say, I'm not going to answer for you, but I will tell you like the things that I'm most proud of are the things that took sweat, that took some bumps and bruises, that took some risk. Um, like marrying and, you, like that was a whoa, risk. Whoa, whoa! Just saying, you know, like this mean? Indiana guy, That's been you know, comfort all the way. Uh-huh. That's been comfort, Linda. But it was definitely. <laughs> you, you didn't go to my school. You didn't live in my subdivision. You know, your subdivision. You really were <laughs> tightly there. <laughs> all my family lived in my subdivision. Like just going outside Fort Mitchell, Kentucky, you went was a out big of thing. state. I know, went, you out, went of out of state. You are wild. See, I told you it was risky, unbelievable, so risky. Oh my gosh! But it was worth it. So you guys, you now you see, you see the risk <laughs> I took. All right. Anyway, guys, we um, we uh, we greatly appreciate you listening mm-hmm. and watching our show. But I hope that there's value in what we do mm-hmm. and gets. Uh, Uh, Everything from maybe a laugh occasionally to a point that you can consider and that you can Mm -hmm. use and uh, put maybe somewhere in your life or your family. So do us a favor, share the shows, Mm. um, give it the five star ratings, please, just for the sake Mm -hmm. of boosting us up on the search engines. And, you know, if we can actually help you uh, one on one in any way. Um, check out our webpage at rocksolidfamilies.org or call our office. You can set up appointments uh, at 812-576-7625. That's rock. Mm. So give us a call. All right. Uh, yeah. we, we believe in family. Uh, we believe mm-hmm. in, in healthy individuals. And uh, we know that the way to a better, uh, a better nation, a, a better community that we live in is r- really through mm-hmm. the family. Yeah. And I just want to take a moment, hon, to say thank you. Because honestly, moms out there, um, it is hard to 
take that risk into trusting God with your children and your marriage and your family. And, and, and that was something I was, I was really starting as a fearful parent. And I'm so thankful for you who really were pushing me out of my comfort zone. I have to admit into taking risks and God blesses that and he takes care of you in that. And so please, I, I want to thank you for hey. being that guy and ladies, it's worth the risk. It's worth taking the chance again, calculated risk, but take those risks and really evaluate why am I parenting the way I am? Am I parenting out of fear or do I trust God with my children, with my marriage, with my life? And I'm going to take those risks that he's called me to take. So just really encourage you to tr give that a try. All right. Well, thank you very much. All right. So we want to thank our sponsors again. We want to thank Maxwell Construction and Casey's Outdoor Solutions for sponsoring the Rock Solid Radio Show. We greatly appreciate those guys. So, man, I think that's all I got. How about uh, yeah. thanks again for listening to Rock Solid Radio. Building a stronger community, one family at a time. Make it a great day. That was a risk right there. I didn't even tell you I was going to do that. And you jumped right in. That was good. All right. Rock Solid Radio wants to thank Casey's Outdoor Solutions. Casey's is a premier garden center and gift shop located in Lawrenceburg, Indiana. They offer a wide selection of high quality plants, landscaping materials, and home decor. They do amazing high quality work and can help you transform your indoor and outdoor living spaces into something beautiful. So stop by Casey's Outdoor Solutions today and let them know you appreciate their support for Rock Solid Radio. Visit Casey's today at 21481 State Line Road, Lawrenceburg, Indiana.